man deceive himself? If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament, from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Hello, family. Welcome back. How's it going, guys? We're back. It's been a while. Yeah, I finally got my brother here. I had planned on having Ken Heidebrook from Hanging on His Words. However, he wasn't able to make it on, so we'll have to do that another day. I do not want to do this whole thing without him. He has some very good deep videos on this subject. So does my brother. It was actually his first video on his channel, and his channel is linked down into the description. Of course, we are the brothers of Founder Earth Brothers, but he also has another channel that's uh, more focused on just biblical stuff. And in the early days, we were focusing a lot more on just exposing the lies that hide creation. So he wanted to keep the two separate. And so, yeah, yeah, we're going to be touching on it a lot. I think when we have Ken back, we'll do we'll go back to this again, kind of a little more yeah. in depth. But uh, yeah, this was something I spent a lot of years, especially early on, studying this topic, because to me, it, it, it was very similar to how. I came across flat earth. I thought somebody, my, my actually my dad had told me that hell wasn't a biblical thing. And growing up in the South, um, that's what we were taught, hell, fire, brimstone. And it was, and you, you see guys on the side of the road with street signs. And that just is a part of our culture in Christianity. We would almost think that heaven and hell is just such a, it's just a given. You, you believe in it. That's where people go when they die. They either go up or down. And uh, I started out trying to debunk this idea that hell actually wasn't biblical. And if you go into it with an open mind and say, and I know this, this is one of those teachings that we catch a lot of heat for the yeah. original video I posted, got so many negative comments on people just really upset about it. I just <clears throat> want to urge you uh, if you're new to this topic to just listen, we're, we're going to go through scripture uh, as openly and honestly as we can and try to get a really good picture of what the old and new Testament say on this, because there's a lot of misunderstandings and I think a lot of that comes from translations. And before yeah. we even get started, I want to make sure everybody knows we are not saying the Bible can't be trusted uh, in any way. It's just that the translations can be confusing. They can be misrepresented. The, the scriptures can be misrepresented by translations. Okay, and, yeah. um, and, and we're not saying that there's no punishment. That's one thing we're not saying, that there's yeah. no fire, there's no burning. We're not saying all of that. There's a lot of things we're not saying. We want to get that clear. This, this is quite the lengthy topic. We'll just we'll try to keep it simple. And I may share some segments of Ken's video that I was going to have on. His, he's got a really good breakdown yeah. of this, really to the point, simple. It's one of those like, hey, you've never looked into this. Look into it from the aspect of a Bible scholar who just goes straight to the word, straight to the context, and uh, breaks it down way better than I ever could. So uh, definitely going to be some fun and you guys feel free to ask questions along the way because it's fresh. It's it's, it'll save us some work having to go in the comments afterwards and, and sort through and find you. So, uh, but feel free to ask them as we're going live. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a, um, the presentation here and start out with a verse that many of you are familiar with. He, my brother put this in his video. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of the first things he, he talked about because we are all familiar with, with this verse, John 3, 16, you see it everywhere. And it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, that gift of everlasting life. And to perish was the other option. However, when we see people, you know, like he talked about the street preachers, and I'm not bashing all street preachers, not all of them do this, but we had one in particular come to our school when we were in college 
condemning people and saying, if you do this, you're going to burn in hell forever. That's what the father wants to do. So your grandmother, who was an unbeliever and died for all eternity while you're in heaven, enjoying eternity in heaven, she's going to be burning forever and ever and ever and ever just because of her, you know, 60, 70, 80 year life existence where she was a non-believer. She's going to burn eternally. And that's sort of the concept of the father that people see right away. And it hinders them from wanting a relationship with him. And like my brother said, it comes from some misunderstandings of the word hell and some translations of that word. And I've got a, a quick like three minute video I'll show later where um, where Ken breaks that down, because it's important to understand the um, usages of that word, because there's many words. Let me remove the uh, comments here so we can pull this up. There are many words that like the word hell, when you see that, that it's talking about, what are some of those words? Yeah, somebody in the comments actually already brought it up. There were three words in, in the New Testament, and this is what got me when I started first looking into this. Three different words are translated as hell, and we're going to kind of get more in depth on what those words are in, in a second when we get to our slides. But um, yeah, Gehenna, a place in Jerusalem, uh, Hades, which is the grave, and uh, Tartarus, which was referred to as a dark abyss where the, the angels were held in Second Peter. And we're going to look at those in detail. So I don't want to cover it too much now. But somebody was mentioned that. So I think a lot of people are waking up to this, that why are there three words that don't mean hell actually translated as hell? It, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And, and we're going to see why exactly I think that is. Um, and a lot of it goes back to the King James Version using multiple words as hell uh, so, in, in the Old and New Testament. Yeah. Yeah. So is... A lot of those words for hell, do they? Is is it the same as the lake of fire? Uh, well, the lake of fire, and like the word Hades is translated as hell. And when you look in the Book of Revelations, they talk about a lake of fire, and there is going to be a lake of fire associated with the final judgment. But it says death and hell, or death and Hades, are thrown into the lake of fire, and the lake of fire is the second death. But yeah, we're going to go real deep <laughs> into that. Yeah, we're going to get it. Uh, yeah, because the lake, because a lot of people say that hell is the place that's. In eternal fire, but it's cast into the lake of fire. Well, and, and and even using the word hell, there's a misconception because yeah, it, it, the the hard pill for me to swallow was there was no word hell in the ancient manuscripts. There was no place of eternal burning in the original translations. We had to translate words as hell that weren't hell, and, and uh, that was a hard thing for me to come to grasp with because there's so many difficult verses. And guys, we don't attempt to say we know everything about the fate of the wicked. Uh, but we do want to take an open, honest look at what the Old Testament says, what the New Testament says, put it together and see why there's confusion and see why there are verses that seem to contradict. Um, and yeah, whenever you're ready, I can pull up my slides and. Okay. You get your stuff in. Ready? Yeah, it's, it's ready now. All right. Let me remove mine. There we go. Add the stream. There you go. Yeah. And to me, I started with this because it, it goes back to the first lie of the, uh, the adversary, when he told Adam and Eve they wouldn't surely die. God told us when we ate from the tree of good and evil that we would surely die. And the original lie was, oh, God didn't really say you would surely die. Actually, he did. <laughs> and the wages of sin is death. And that's what was brought into the world. And, every, you know, uh, that's confusing to us because we don't really understand what death is yet. And I think Christianity's kind of mixed ourselves with so many different beliefs on this. Uh, but what you're going to see, though, is there are a lot of parallels with the Old New Testament as far as what God you know, says and what the gospel says. He says here, say to them, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather they turn from their ways and live. And this is God's declaration to his people. And it sounds similar to, to me to John 3, 16. He doesn't want you to perish. That's why he gave his only begotten son. Um, but the. What I, what I found when I looked for, you know, you start looking for the fate of the wicked in the Old Testament. You keep seeing this recurring pattern. Look at this here. It says that uh, when the tempest pass, uh, passes, the wicked is no more, but the righteous are established forever. And you're going to keep seeing that. And I put some verses in here. There are tons of verses, and I haven't included all of them by any means. But uh, he says here, the wicked will not survive the judgment. That's a very final fate. And he says, and the sinners will not be in the community of the righteous. So we're seeing this parallel between good and evil, between the wicked and the righteous. And um, there is mentions of flames and what the Bible calls a fiery furnace in the Old Testament. 
But what it does is it always burns these people up. You see here that it devours them, uh, that it will burn them in the time of his anger. And like here, as smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish before God. You see this word perish used a lot in the Old Testament. I think that's why it's used in the New Testament, because that's actually what's going to happen. Uh, is somebody asking a good question? I thought you were looking. Oh, no, I was just oh, okay. Uh, but the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemies will be like the beauty of the fields. They will vanish. They will vanish like smoke. There's all these recurring uh, verses that talk about this. Uh, the Lord preserves all them that love him, but the wicked he will destroy. And I can't tell you how many times I found this same pattern over and over. The, uh, they'll be crushed. The sinners and the transgressors, they'll be crushed together. All And those who forsake the Lord will come to an end. Uh, and that's an idea that's kind of confusing to us because we don't understand. Most of us, our Christian view is everybody yeah. has this eternal soul. Yeah, well, you you said something before, and that is we receive eternal life as a gift. At what point do the unbelievers receive eternal life? You know what I mean? Yeah. You said you brought that up at one point and that was something I had never really thought of too. Yeah. Eternal life is a gift from God. And this idea that the wicked have it too, and that it's just going to be in a different place. That's, I think that's where a lot of the confusion is because when we get to looking at this, and I, I like Malachi chapter 4, verse 1 and th to 3, because it it does sound kind of like a hell-based judgment, that it says, Surely the day is coming, it will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire. So there is a fire, and we, we are going to see this again, the, punishment. the lake of fire. It says It's uh, a punishment. It's an eternal uh, punishment. That's a word we do see. Mm -hmm. It's an eternal punishment. And there's a huge difference in an eternal punishment. And an eternal punishing, which we've, be, we, as a as Christians, have become uh, believers in. Uh, but he says, says the Lord Almighty, not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the son of righteousness will ra raise with healing in its rays, and you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Then you will trample on the wicked. It says they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act. So this fire burns them up. It leaves them without root or branch and they're going to be ashes under our feet. So this is much different than what we would associate this fire with. We're thinking, oh, they're just going to keep burning forever and ever. But in, in Malachi, it says they're going to be burned to ash. Yeah. And I was, <clears throat> I was responding to that comment, um, exiled in ba Babylon says, none of those, none of those passages do away with eternal judgment. Yeah. The, it's, yeah. A, it's, a, it goes on the judgment. Once it happens, there's no going back and getting another chance. Once, once you die, the second death, which is what we're trying to escape. And we, when you become part of the first resurrection, you're not going to experience the second death. And so that second death is what we are. That's our hope to, to make it to where we don't experience that. And it's not going to be pleasant. It's not like they just snap out of existence. There's going to be gnashing of teeth. It's going to be pretty awful. It's going to be gruesome. We're not here to paint a pretty picture and say, uh, do it, do as you want, you know, the Aleister Crowley type of stuff. And, just live and it doesn't matter. You're just going to die. It's going to be painless. There, there is a holding place before the resurrection too. And it's, it's definitely, there's, there's levels and there's, I think Ken has some really good videos on that that have opened my eyes to that. And that has to do with that word Sheol. And you saw it in our thumbnail and people are like, what is Sheol? What does yeah, that mean? Sheol it, it was in many in, translations or in, especially in Hebrew, it typically refers to the grave, mm -hmm. uh, but here, look at the word soul. To us, the soul, we think everybody has a soul. And when you watch Hollywood movies, you see that a lot. When somebody dies, this soul like rises up out of their body. And you hear a lot of people who have near-death experiences where they're like, my soul left my body. Uh, and, it, and it makes us think, oh, yeah, your soul's going up to heaven or down somewhere. But in the Bible, when it speaks of the soul, it was the breath of life. God gave it to us. He gave it to the animals. The life of our life is in our blood. You know, we have this life force in us and that's what the word soul is it wasn't an immortal um it wasn't it's not necessarily an immortal soul you have to gain eternal life from god through christ yeah, uh, we need to have sean come on there's sean yeah. out there kingdom in context yeah body and soul destroyed in gehenna if you want to join in sean we can send you a link <laughs> uh, <laughs> just let me know and here's a good verse i was watching a movie it's called the immortals i don't know if you guys have seen that it was a lot it was years ago but this, ver this quote popped up, and it was from Socrates, and it said, All men's souls are immortal, but the souls of the righteous are immortal and divine. That 
sounds biblical to us, but this is Greek mythology. And we've borrowed that idea that everybody has an immortal soul. And we've kind of mixed it with Christianity uh, to match kind of some of the things they were teaching. Uh, but here, the soul who sins is the one who will die. Just like in the Garden of Eden, you know, if the day you eat of this, you're going to die. So a soul can die. And here it's, we're told that uh, all those who go down to the dust will bow before him. Even those who cannot keep his soul or even he who cannot keep his soul alive. If your soul's going to live and burn forever, there'd be no reason to keep it alive. It's already going to stay alive forever. Here, people cannot keep it alive. <laughs> so that's that. And that's why the lake of fire eventually is referred to as the second death. Yeah, I've got that in my slides too. Show me to pull that up. Yeah, um, but yeah, here's the, here's the three words we were talking about. Somebody mentioned these already in the comment comments, but these are the three words that we see in the New Testament and in the Old Testament. If you read a King James Old Testament, whenever you see the word Hades or grave, they translate it as hell. Uh, and in the New Testament, the word uh, Hades is just the Greek equivalent of Sheol in the Old Testament. They're the same place. So yeah. when you see prophecies about the grave, like Jesus was not abandoned in the grave, uh, and that's the first one we want to look at. But Gehenna was a place, the Valley of Hinnom. It's still in Jerusalem. You can still look at it. Uh, Tartarus, that's the third word. It's just a dark abyss. It was a place where the angels were held. Um, and it's described in Revelation. But Hades is very steeped, that word, especially when they use it in the New Testament, and they translate it as Hades. In Greek mythology, he was one of the gods of Mount Olympus, I believe. And uh, <clears throat> and here, this is Greek mythology. This isn't Christianity. It says, in mythology, the Greek underworld is a distinct realm where an individual goes after death. Sound familiar? The earliest idea of an afterlife in Greek myth is that at the moment of death, an individual's essence is separated from the corpse, just like in a Hollywood movie, and transported to the underworld. That's Greek mythology. Uh, yeah, if you guys can see that, it's kind of small, maybe on our screen. But uh, yeah, that's Greek mythology. That's not Christianity. That's their interpretation of Hades. And so that word Hades is translated a lot of times with a capital H in our Bible instead of just being used as the grave. Uh, it's just the word Sheol. Here it is used in context in Hosea. It says, I will deliver this people from the power of the grave, Sheol. I will redeem them from death. Where, O oh, death, are your plagues? Where, O oh, grave, is your uh, destruction? So this is the word Sheol, grave, being used biblically in the old testament uh and here again we see it in psalms if i ascend to heaven you are there if i make my bed in sheol in the grave behold you are there so this is obviously not talking about hell and if you're reading king james it probably would say if i make my bed in hell there you are god you're with me you know like that it wouldn't make sense in the in that context so we need to be consistent with our understanding of a word and exactly what it means. Mm. Somebody said, what is your brother's YouTube channel name? It's in the description. Oh, yeah, it's Grace and Truth Fellowship, and it's hard to find. <clears throat> uh, it's a smaller channel, and I have not been posting. We've been mostly just posting on here for a while, but we will eventually go back to putting out biblical teachings on that channel. We've had a lot going on over the past couple of years. Yeah, uh, a lot of changes, a lot of good things, a lot of blessings, a lot of a lot of things. Um, do you want me to show Ken's little video where he breaks some of the stuff down real simple? For like yeah, minutes? yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, okay. we can go to that. Ken, yeah, Ken gave me permission to uh, show segments. I'm only going to show a few minutes. It's a longer video. I would, I would uh, highly suggest after this video, if you have any questions, go in and watch his video in its entirety. I forget exactly how long it is, but he's very good at breaking stuff down, um, high quality stuff. And um, you won't regret going there to learn some stuff as well as Kingdom in Context, the channel that I have pulled up right here that keep things, as it says, in context and breaks it down. If you go to our channel on the home page, you will see and like scroll down, you'll see the recommended channels. And those are some of them. All right. Let me find this video real quick. You see a folder titled hell videos there it is okay so here, here's part one of ken's video and we'll come back right when it's over it's just i just uploaded a few many a few minutes of this video when i was a young boy i was taught in church that humans go to one of two places when they die heaven or hell if you're a christian you go straight to heaven to be with jesus if you're not a christian he goes straight to hell to join Satan in perpetual torment, burning an unquenchable fire for all eternity. Is this what the Bible truly teaches? In this video, I'm going to be focusing on everything there is to know about hell. 
If this topic intrigues you or has impacted you in one way or another, then I recommend that you watch right through to the end. If you get something out of this video, then please hit the like button, consider sharing it with your friends and family, and hit the subscribe button. Let's get to it. I'm going to start this off with a little history lesson regarding the origins of the word hell. The modern English word hell is derived from the old English word hell, spelled with one L, which reaches as far back as the 5th century Anglo-Saxon period. The word has similar linguistic derivations in all branches of the Germanic languages, which include Old Norse hell, which refers to both a location and a goddess-like being in Norse mythology. Many of you may have seen Marvel's Thor Ragnarok and noticed this character, named Hela, in the movie, playing the Norse goddess of death. Old Frisian Hel, Old Saxon Helia, Old High German Hela, and Gothic Halia. All forms ultimately stem from the reconstructed Proto Germanic feminine noun Halio, which means concealed place of the underworld. One rather unfortunate problem with the Christian tradition is that it often conflates Hades and Sheol with the lake of fire, when, biblically speaking, Hades and Sheol are actually the same underworld compartment, and the lake of fire is just that, a lake that's comprised of fire. It's a literal flame-filled lake, not a holding structure like Sheol and Hades are. What's worse is that several translations categorize Hades, Sheol, the lake of fire, and Tartarus, under one heading. You guessed it. Hell. In essence, many translators have used the modern English word hell in place of both the Greek words Hades and Gehenna. The theological problem with that is, Hades and Gehenna are two completely different places that serve two completely different functions. Before I elaborate on the scriptures that mention Gehenna, I want us to take a quick look at this word in the Greek. Gehenna is Strong's number 1067 and is defined as a valley west and south of Jerusalem and a symbolic name for the final place of punishment for the ungodly. These are accurate definitions. Strong's continues to say that it is a place underneath the earth and a place of punishment for evil. I agree with the latter, but the former is something that I'll touch on a bit later. Helps Word Study states that Gehenna is a transliteration of the Hebrew term Gehinnom, which means the Valley of Hinnom. Indeed, this Hebraic connection is correct. Helps says that Gehenna is also known as Hell, which can refer to the Lake of Fire in Revelation. I find this assertion to be inaccurate, and we'll touch on why throughout the video. We're going to parse all of these terms and place names and hopefully conclude with a better contextual understanding than what is currently circulating in mainstream churches today. This topic matters a lot because it has the potential to ruin the faith of those who aren't as studied in God's word. The theological doctrine of everlasting torture and hellfire has resulted in people abandoning their hope in the gospel message of God's kingdom to come. It has turned people away from ever hearing this good news. I want to set the record straight. Now, just an FYI, I'm not claiming to be wiser and more knowledgeable than the scholars who have provided us with these types of concordances and study guides, but I do believe that they mistakenly conflate Hades and Gehenna by generically referring to both as hell, whether they know it or not. As I have said before, translators and language experts are great at what they do, and I certainly appreciate all the work and studying that goes into their profession but that doesn't mean that they are impervious to making flaws. It doesn't mean that they automatically understand the overarching context and themes contained in the words that they translate. And as I've tried to show in other videos, they do have their own biases. Sorry, we were muted. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was just a quick snapshot. But people are asking about Lazarus and the rich man. And we are going to get to that verse because that was one of those difficult. Like when I read it, I was like, this sounds like our present day interpretation of an eternal punishment. Uh, you know, he was in torment among these flames. And I have in my original video on hell 
on Grace and Truth. We actually shared that one on here too, I believe. I think it's in the description. No, but I mean, didn't we share it on this channel? Yeah, we shared it on okay. here a while uh, back. Yeah. But yeah, um, we do cover that verse, and I'm going to get to that in just a second, but I want to go back yeah, kind of to where, yeah, go back to the slides here. There you go. If I can change it in here. But yeah, the uh, the word Hades oh, and Sheol in me. the Old Testament uh, we were talking about, you see Jesus use this word, and you know, he says, and I tell you, I tell you that... Um, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Now to us, in most English translations, especially the King James, they had used the word hell for centuries, and that's all we saw was the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And we imagine the gates and then this flaming lake of fire. Uh, but Jesus was speaking of the gates of the grave. And if you look at the definition of that word that's used for gates, and it says in antiquity, this generally represented authority or power. So the authority of the grave is not going to hold the people, uh, not going to overcome us. You know, it's kind of like when that trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ rise, the greats will not, the gate, the gates of the grave, the authority of the grave will not overcome us because we have life in the age to come. Um, so that was a big one here. Who can over, who can escape the power of the grave? You know, who can escape the power? Well, that's how we escape the power of the grave through the Messiah. And that's what that when when Jesus was saying that to Peter, he was referring to the power of the grave and how we're going to overcome that. Uh, there's a parallel there. Uh, let's see. All right, here it is in the book of Acts. It says, seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. Because we know that our Messiah was in a tomb, but he was brought out of the tomb. He was resurrected. He did not decay. He was not left dead. Uh, and, and that's where we get this word Hades. And it's translated as hell so many times. So it's important when you're reading scripture, especially if you're reading a, a King James and a lot of times, I believe even New King James still has that word hell yeah. translated there. Yeah, people ask, what translations do you use? And it's not as much about the translation as it is using tools that we have available now. I know some of you, um, it may be more challenging to use the online tools, but going to things like places like Bible Hub and using the interlinear tools and um, apps like eSword, they'll show you what those original words were translated from. And you can do parallels where you compare all these different translations to see what other translators are doing as well. Yeah, um, but yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna be risen when when Christ returns. So the grave doesn't hold power over us, and that's what the Messiah was telling us. He wasn't saying Hades or hell, the gates of hell. Uh, here, death and Hades are gonna be thrown into the lake of fire. So to to say the lake of fire is hell and to say that Hades is hell is completely wrong here because we see that death and Hades, death and the grave are going to be thrown into this lake of fire. Everything's going to be burned up. And that is called the second death. And there's a reason that it's referred to as the second death. And that won't make sense to you unless you understand what this fire does. It's causing the wicked to perish. Someone's saying our picture is really blurry. Is everyone getting that same blurry issue? Um, no. It might be the signal down here. Yeah, I don't know. We're downstairs. I'm not in my usual office because there's no heat and air up there. Is anyone else seeing the same thing? Sorry to kind of stop in the middle of this. I can cut this out later. Saying the picture is really blurry. So someone said yes. So it's really blurry image. Hmm. Let's remove that. Let's see. What about now? Our, Maybe. Is our image blurry or just the presentation? Maybe because we're coming. Someone from said a it's not blurry. Okay, it's fine, not blurry. Okay, scriptures clear. Pick a bit blurry. Yeah, it's because we have a cheap camera. <laughs> it's my computer camera. Okay, so let's bring this back. Okay, yeah. So yeah, so the lake of fire is the second death, and that'll make sense once you realize that that's what it. Uh, brings about is literally a second death. And it says the one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. So if we survive the judgment, you know, some will not survive the judgment. We won't be hurt at all by the second. So death. the second death is painful. Yeah. It's not going to be pleasant. Again, we're not saying that the, um, that, Oh, it says, yeah, Sean said it's auto playing at seven twenty. may have to change the settings there. I'm not sure. 
go down to settings at the bottom of the video and increase them. But yeah, um, what were we just saying? Oh, we're talking about the second death. We're not going <laughs> to yeah, be hurt. Yeah, there is a yeah, there is, is a painful. fire. We're not saying that there's no fire coming for the wicked. They are going to be burned. It's just our Father right. is just. His punishment will be just. And and the main thing is, um, a lot a lot. I've had people come on here one time. We were doing a live stream, and they said, "I'm really sad. My grandmother passed away. She was a non-believer. Um, is she really going to burn forever? She was she was a decent person. She just didn't want to have anything to do." you know, essentially with religion or reading the Bible. And he was upset legitimately. You're, like a lot of people, and we have experienced this in our own families, um, where someone turned around to a family member in church, in a church setting, um, because they were giggling and laughing and said, you're going to burn in hell to her face. And so with that picture of this eternal fire and all of that stuff, this person says, I don't want anything to do with this creator who's like that. And so many people feel the same way. It's hard to really understand who the father is. Uh, fortunately for us, we experienced his love and his mercy. That same pattern you see throughout the Bible. If you just type in the word mercy, you'll see it talks about his mercy enduring forever all the time. People understood that loving aspect of our father. He's protecting his children. He's doing all these things for us throughout history to make sure that you were born, to make sure that the elect make it through his children. And the opposite of that, like we're taught, like we're, we're taught, I was talking to somebody the other day, we're taught to forgive our enemies and to pray for them. You know, like we're supposed to, it's, it's from the same aspect our father has. He loves us. He wants us when we were foolish to come out of that. Um, when I had my heartache and all that heartbreak, I thought here's this wrathful being punishing me because I really didn't know who he was. And the whole time he had always loved me. He just gave me these guidelines so that I, you don't step out into the world and get hurt and um, end up losing your life or dying the second death. Yeah. Um, anyways, we just talked about Hades. That was one of the words, right? That yeah. was translated as hell in the New Testament. This is the one, Valley of Hinnom. This is the one Jesus used that was translated as hell when he spoke of it. And it bothers me that we would take this literal place in Jerusalem, and it's actually spoken of in the Old Testament over and over again. And uh, it was understood when Jesus spoke to his people, they knew what he was saying. And Jesus was speaking in parables to the people. We know that because it says in Scripture, he only spoke in parables to the people. He didn't. Um, he only spoke to his disciples secretly without speaking in a parable. He only spoke plainly to them. Uh, and we're going to look at that verse here in a second. But the Valley of Hinnom is mentioned over and over again in the Old Testament. If you've searched into the, you know, Baal worship and Molech and all that stuff, you know that this was a very terrible place. People were sacrificing their children to Molech here. And the Old Testament, there's some verses down here you can look up that reference the Valley of Hinnom or Gai ben Hinnom, the Valley of the Sons of Hinnom. And, and that you can go visit Hinnom today, actually. Or, or it's, it's called Gehenna in Scripture. But uh, it says, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell, in Gehenna. That's the, that's the verse where Ooh. Jesus was quoting this. Uh, Interesting. And, you know, you, you think about it to us, it wouldn't really make sense. Read that verse for what it's saying. Somebody is going to destroy both the soul and the body in Gehenna. And now Jesus was speaking in parables here and using... The flame, people understood that Gehenna was a place where things were burned. Um, and he was using it symbolically to say, somebody's going to destroy both of you in this place, your body and your soul. The life that you have and your body are both going to be burned up in Gehenna. Uh, and he was using it symbolically. Uh, and here we see, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes, and he made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. Here we have again that idea that the wicked are going to be burned to ash, just like we saw in the Old Testament. There'll be ashes under our feet. That was God's example of what's coming. Um, and here I thought this was interesting in the book of uh, Jeremiah. It talks about the Valley of Hinnom. It says the whole valley where dead bodies and ashes are thrown. And this was a prophecy here being spoken. It says, and all the terraces out of the uh, Kidron Valley and of the east, as far as the corner of the, uh, the horse gate, will be holy to the Lord. So this is talking about Gehenna, the Valley of Hinnom, and saying it'll it, eventually it's going to be holy to the Lord. The city will never again be uprooted or demolished. So I found that interesting to see that it was used in that parallel if it was, in fact, accurately translated as hell. That's definitely not uh, an eternal burning place. 
Um, and Jesus uses it multiple times, even in just the book of Matthew alone. I think he uses it like seven times and it's always translated as hell in most translations. Uh, but here, Tartarus, this is the third word that's translated as hell. And, and, and I think that's mostly in the King James. A lot of translations will call it Tartarus. Uh, and we're not bashing the King James. King James no, is a good translation. No, it's great, guys. It's, it's great <laughs> for its time. Uh, but yeah, that is um, another one of those words to, to look out for. It was referred to as a, uh, it says, God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but sent them to Tartarus, putting them in chains of darkness. That's a huge hint right there. This is a place of darkness where they're chained up and being held for judgment right now. Uh, so flames don't produce darkness in my experience usually. Uh, but <clears throat> here, look in Luke 13, just like John 3, 16, he says, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. And you'll see that over and over again. Every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing, they perish because they refuse to love the mm -hmm. truth and be saved. Yeah. Uh, and that pattern just keeps going. Uh, and John 3, 16 is a perfect example of that. We've always quoted it, but never really paid attention to exactly what it's saying. Um, but I had a bunch, we had a bunch of you guys talking about um, Lazarus and the rich man. And I don't know you if I can screen share. Can I screen share? Um, if you have it pulled up, let's see. I may have to do it. You can read from it. I can take it down. Oh, okay. Here, let me, <laughs> I don't know if I can do that from here. Da, da, da. Hold on. There we go. So we can remove that. So you can, you can read it. Okay, yeah. All right, so I'm going to basically what, what I looked at. When I was reading over this verse here, you've got, it was called, if, you, if you're familiar with the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, uh, oops, historically, where did I go? Here it is. All right. Historically, it was referred to as the parable of dives because that was believed to be the rich man's name. This was a actual uh, very common parable back in those times when Jesus used it. They were probably somewhat familiar with the story. Um, but what I was looking at when I read it was what words are in there in the Greek? What is it actually saying? And looking at it in light of the context of every other verse surrounding it, what, what could it mean? And for me, it says here, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen. Uh, he lived in luxury every day. So you have this guy who was very wealthy and it says at his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores says the time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades. And here we see that word Hades being used in this. And in, in King James, it would probably say in hell uh, where he was in torment. OK, so when you read a, an, an English translation, especially the King James, it would say there instead of saying grave, it would say hell. So here we have a guy who's in the grave. He's dead. Uh, where he was in torment. That word torment was referred to, was a, uh, when I looked up that word, and it's been a long year since I've done this study, but that word torment was, was a stone used to test the quality of gold, something, it was something for judgment, basically. He was being judged to see, judged for quality, basically, some type of stone for judging the quality of gold. That's that word torment. So for me, I was like, wait a minute, he's in the grave, he's being judged. Uh, that's a lot different than being in hell and being tormented, which is what we would imagine hell to be. Uh, and it says, he looked up and he saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm in agony in this fire. So to us, in our minds, we see Lazarus, it, you know, in reading this as a young believer, he was in hell. He was being tormented in hell, and he's in agony in this fire. But when you look at the, the Greek words here, he was saying, I am in agony in, E-N is the Greek word, which mm -hmm. can mean by or among. He was, in, he was being judged. He was in the grave. He, he wakes up. What does it say in the Bible is going to happen to the wicked? They're going to be cast into a lake of fire. That is their judgment. And, and that's what the Bible refers to uh, as their final fate here, he's saying there is a fire. He's, he's close to this fire. He's among this fire. He's please give me some water. You know, I need something. There is going to be a fire. Um, but if he had been cast into it, he would have been burned to ash. He would have perished, uh, but he is in judgment among these flames. Uh, and, and that's the way that with me dealing with it, reading this scripture and trying to figure out exactly what it says, 
Um, let's see what, what else. I think. But yeah, it was it was basically a role reversal. This whole parable um, of this guy had a lot, this other guy was poor, and he had a terrible life. And one is getting, one is receiving eternal life, and one is about to be cast into the lake of fire. But I think for us, we see that, and we go, "Oh, he was in hell, and he was being tormented." And dip, you know, it, it just—it's one of those verses that's difficult if you're reading it under that light of hell is a place and this guy has an eternal soul and he's burning in it right now. And he's talking to somebody, uh, but put that in the context of the rest of, uh, of scripture. Um, we're not going to be able to go to these people and pull them out at that point. You know, at that point it's too late. He's going to be judged by that fire. He's going to be cast. He's going to be told to part from me and he's going to be thrown into this lake of fire and he's going to be burned. Uh, and Jesus was using this as a parable to, uh, this isn't a literal event. It was a parable but Jesus was using that to show what's going to happen to the wicked. And they would have been familiar with that furnace that was going to come. It was going to burn the wicked to ash. They would have known that and they would have understood that. But we're reading it with this mindset of this is an eternal soul. This guy's guy and he's burning forever. But look at the translation for exactly what it's saying. I think a lot of times that'll clear passages like that. Up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Can I even add this to the stream back to the stream? I was going yeah. to pull up some things. Uh, yeah, and somebody was saying something about Jonah earlier uh, that he actually died, and that was something hard for me to understand because as a kid, we grew up watching those those cartoons where the individuals were inside of a well and they're making a fire or whatever, you know, and then they get spit out and they're just alive and they're having a good old time inside this well, kind of setting on its tongue. They're not being swallowed, and and that's how I pictured uh, Jonah. And um, Ken, in one of his videos, brought this up. And I haven't studied this in, in great detail. I believe the video is called like Voices from the Grave. And he investigates Sheol based on the Hebrew cosmology that you see here. We always see this little Hebrew cosmology and that cavity in the middle called Sheol, like a holding place for the dead, is uh, what a lot of the Strong's concordances call that, that area. And uh, I've got some slides up with that as well. And... Um, but he, he talks about that where he says, um, for as Jonah's was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And Jonah over here uh, says, now the Lord prepared the great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. But here's what he says. This is what Jonah says. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, or cried I, and thou heardest my voice. That word hell, what do you think that word is? It was originally Sheol. And so out of the belly of Sheol, I cried. So really, really interesting connections there. There's always things pointing to things in the future when it comes to the Messiah. This is one of them. And and he knew that the Messiah knew that he's telling us Jesus says exactly that. And so I thought that was something cool to look into. Um, Ken has a good video on it. And someone had mentioned that in the comments. I don't know who it was. It kind of flew past, but uh, there's that word Sheol. And it says in the Strong's and underworld, a place to which people descend at death, sort of like a holding place. And I've often wondered if that's why those like near death experiences are different for different people. I don't know if you guys have, I've never Thought seen about it called a holding too. place in scripture. I've just yeah. seen it called the grave. Uh, I'd have yeah. to look more into that. Yeah, it's a cool study. His video, uh, I believe, is called Voices from the Grave um, on Ken's channel. And it, it, I watched it, and I'm like learning stuff new. I'm thinking, this is kind of cool. He kind of ties in a lot of interesting things, things that no one's talking about, things that I had never thought of. You know, like, like he said in that segment we shared of his video, we were simply told, you're good, you die, you go up. You're bad, you die, you go down. That's it. There's no resurrection. There's no thousand-year reign. It was a very simplistic view, um, but we're trying to prepare for that first resurrection in the thousand-year period. We're not. It's 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 not. We're not saying just do whatever you want. There's no there's no punishment. Again, I'm gonna I'll say that quite a few times because a lot of people coming in late might think that's what we're saying, but but not at all. All yeah, right. I know. But when we say hell isn't in the Bible, what we're saying is the present day concept of hell isn't biblical. There is a fire and there is the wicked are going to be burned there. You know, everything's going to be cast in this lake of fire and perish and burned to ashes. Um, 
That's a final punishment, uh, an everlasting. And, and we see that word eternal punishment and people say, well, see, there it is. It's they're eternally being punished. But that word eternal is in the age to come. They're going to be punished. Um, and their punishment is the second death is what Revel Revelation calls a second death. And there was a huge difference. And that was the thing that caught me up was, what do you mean they're not going to be punished forever? It says here there's an eternal punishment. Uh, and that was one of my proof texts when I believed in hell being this eternal place of punishment. And there's a huge difference in e punishing someone day and night forever over and over again and having an eternal punishment. There's an eternal punishment. That's your final fate. That's your punishment in the age to come. You die. You'll die the second death. And then there's a there would be a separate, if it was a punishing, where they're continuously punishing you day after day, you know, night night after night. Um, and, you know, you've got that place where it's like, well, the, where, where the moth dieth not and the flame is not quenched. And we think, oh, well, that flame just keeps burning forever and the wicked are inside of it. Um, but the flame not being quenched means you're not going to be able to put it out. It's going to burn everything to ash. It's going to do what it was set out to do. You can't just pour water on it and save yourself from this fire that's coming. Uh, yeah, it, it is definitely a fire that's going to bring destruction, but the wicked will perish. So there'll be ashes under our feet. Um, and all will be made right. No. Sorry, I'm going through my slides here. Yeah. Oh, I never did finish adding to those. But yeah, I was I've got some stuff on here too to kind of conclude with um with lawlessness because the ones that are going to be cast into the lake of fire, they're being misled into this lawlessness. A lot of things you're seeing come to the forefront now. And, and what's becoming culture is a form, or not a form, it is, it's lawlessness. And they're wanting you to do whatever you want. They're erasing the idea of a father, of a judgment, of this eternal punishment where you are being, um, you're dying the second death. Let's see what Sean has to say here. And the way they can do that, a lot of it's with the stuff about creation. If you can eliminate the true creation model, then you can... Uh, it, and also throwing the things like evolution, people just think, well, I can do whatever I want. One of the uh, famous serial killers, um, which one was it? The one that ate people. Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. There you go. Um, a lot of people, that's like the most watched show on Netflix, if that tells you where we're headed. Uh, but before he died, he said he, he grew up believing in evolution and all those things. And that's why he felt like there was no punishment. There was no everything didn't matter. You just kind of live and nothing really matters. Um he says it has to be called a place of eternal punishment because Sheol is a temporary location and not an eternal destination. It all assumes we know the process of judgment. Yeah. So man, I wish Sean was on here. He would be breaking this down really good. Um, but yeah, that lawlessness where we're heading, I've been studying that, that topic in detail. And I'll see if I have my slides up here. I can find them. I've got a lot of slides up here that I kind of keep. Um, but talking about that that judgment where it says the son of man uh, shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. Let's look at iniquity. That word broken down is lawlessness. OK, there it is again. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. OK, I'm a little squares a little off there. Um, so there's that word again, lawlessness. And that's why the father sent his son. He loved the world. And it tells us here in Acts, unto you first, God having raised up his son, Jesus sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities, his lawlessness. Okay, so what does lawlessness, lawlessness look like and where does it come from? That brings us to this book here. You're seeing this new age of lawlessness. It's from Aleister Crowley and when my brother here was studying all the evil stuff, this is one of the figures he kept bringing up. And I'm thinking, um, who is this? Who is this guy? You know, he's, he's calls himself, what do you call himself? The beast. Yeah. The great, you know, he wanted to, six, yeah. to have this, this title and these sayings and he was summoning. He wanted to wipe out Christianity. Yeah. He wanted to get, get rid of it. And it really did create a movement, but his book that he wrote was, he called it the book of the law. And why I find that very telling is because the enemy is always trying to copy what the father does with sacrifices, with high priests, with all these different things they have. Um, that's what they do. And all this stuff was allegedly dictated to him by a demon. 
And when you look up that uh, in the Bible, when you go to the Bible and type in the book of the law, you can see it. It was right there. It was, it was placed next to the Ark of the Covenant. This is probably hard to see, but you can go on to Bible yeah, Gateway and I type in the book it. of the law right and see this stuff. Um, it's everywhere. Let me make this bigger so we can both see it. Um, but yeah, this stuff is is all throughout the Bible, the book of the law. And that's why they like to, to name it that. And um, let me play it full screen. There you go. And so that religion, that cult of that religion and their symbol, it's very similar. You'll see that a lot of times with the space travel stuff going on and all of that. But this book of the law is the central text of Thelema, this religion that uses that logo we just saw. And um, let me get to the point. I don't want to keep reading all these demons' names. I can't stand them. But through the reception of the book, Crowley proclaimed the arrival of a new stage in spiritual evolution of humanity to be known as the Eon of Horus. Or Horus. So we're bringing back that Babylonian and Egypt stuff yet again. And you can see this guy, this dude right here on the left, mimicking these things that we've seen that we just think are harmless. We grew up thinking, okay, that's King Tut. This is these Egyptians. That's how they died. Kind of looks like they died going down water slides here <laughs> with their arms crossed. But it's all for a reason. And the primary precept of this new eon is the charge, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. And so that sounded very good to people. People wanted to have no consequences. They just wanted to do whatever they want. And so you see this movement, and it's really making a comeback right now. They use music. They use all these little puppets they can to feed us these lines of, do this every day, kind of stay in a state of being drunk and or drugged up, whatever it is, they want you to do these things. And you and that book specifically states these things. But one thing I saw about this demon, what it said, and do not read this book. This these books are designed to lure people away and try to go, here's some lawlessness, you know, like it's gonna be fun. Come to this side. There's there's nothing, there's no judgment. And this is what what really caught my eye was these demons are tricking their followers into believing in infinite space. And it literally says, um, now you shall know that, that the chosen priest and apostle of infinite space, words that we hear all the time through those deceiving liars who are teaching us this stuff, is the prince, priest, the beast, and his woman called the scarlet woman is all power given. They shall gather my children. See, he's calling them my children. They like to replicate our father into their fold, they shall bring the glory of the stars into the hearts of men. So how many of us grew up with that? You know, it's all about the stars, wish upon a star, all this stuff, become a superstar, bringing this deep space, this infinite space into existence. And that's what they want their believers to think as well, except for, of course, the ones who are deceiving the world on the highest levels, like right now with the Artemis mission, you guys are seeing this stuff. But I thought that was very telling into this lawlessness and how you see the symbols played out, sorry, into the Space Force logos. Yeah, you really, today. a lot of people really wouldn't make the connection with infinite space and this demon practices and these teachings that go way back to even Crowley. You know, yeah, they, I would have never known that they were... The demonic world, it's really important to them that this deception remains with the people. Yeah. There's no, there's no heaven there. There's no firmament. There's no father above it. There's just infinite space. And here we are. There's nobody that's going to judge you. Yeah, just do whatever you want. And that's, that's how they lure their, their people in. And then they get them to partake in this lawlessness. And it just continues to spread. And, and that's why people, they get angry about the notion of, of, of our father. And they, get, they put their people out there to teach you, you know, just to show you the wrath and, and not see the love and that mercy that endures forever and ever and ever. You seeing questions? No, I was up? just trying to read it, but it's not. Okay. Is that not a touch? Yeah. So there you go. There's there's a lot of this stuff, and we'll do. I'm going to do a, an in depth video breaking a lot more of this stuff down with lawlessness. Um, but those are the ones that they're trying to get you to partake in that, so that you'll be the ones cast into the lake of the into the lake of fire, die the second death, and all of that. So let me go ahead and so I can remove that. But yeah, it's a deep topic. Again, we have. Um, Ken's video and my brother's video in the description, or at least his channel. I can't remember if I leaked your video, yeah. but his channel's in there. It's his very first video he put out on, on his channel there. And uh, that was back before I got him to do videos. He's the one 
if there's any confusion on who is who, I forget that people still yeah. can't tell us apart. Like there's two of you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, luck, fortunately, he's he's um, not shaved, so we look a little different. But um, Michael, he's the one. He did the final card video. Whenever I go to meetups or meet people, they're like, oh, the final card is your best video. Yeah, he was the one that did like 95% of that video. I think I gave you some. 98 point. Probably 98. <laughs> yeah, I gave you some clips. and some When I was about and, to give up, Josh came in and helped me finish it. I was his I was, coach. Yeah. We, had, we had notes everywhere. We were going crazy. Yeah. Um, you reading questions? Did you find any? Yeah, you I was reading questions. Uh, no, not necessarily. I was just, uh, but um, yeah, th this is a difficult topic and a lot of people get angry i'm surprised a lot of you guys aren't getting really triggered because that's usually the first reaction we get is people kind of screaming at us but um yeah it's just one of those things that's very very eye-opening to look at if you go into it with an open mind and you say well what does the bible actually say go to the old testament go to the new testament god's word will never contradict uh, and there are things that won't make sense if we don't look at them in their original context. And that's a hard thing to do, to go back and look at it like you've never seen it and like you haven't been indoctrinated. We've all been so indoctrinated. And when we come to the scripture, it's important that we just ask God to give us wisdom. Give us, you know, look at set the uh, Proverbs chapter two, call out for wisdom, insight, understanding. God will give you these things. He will reveal to you if something isn't true or not through, through the power of his Holy Spirit, through discernment. So it's important no. that we have that. Yeah. And don't put your trust in man and us and me, him, anybody. You know, there's a lot of really good people out there who know the word, but they're really good at being misled by mistranslations, false teachings, whatever it is. And so even us, we're not claiming to be right. This is a study. It's an ongoing study. I'm learning new stuff every day on this topic. And like our good friends here say, pray for the spirit of truth to reveal what is truth on everything. If you're angry, if you find yourself being angry, I found myself being really angry with debating certain topics and I've stepped back and I've prayed about it. And, you know, don't just pray. Oh, pray that they see the truth. Pray that we see that you see the truth, you know, that we all do and humble yourself. Those are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven for a reason. Uh, when they asked Jesus who the greatest in the kingdom of heaven were, he said those that are humble. He didn't say the ones who know the most. You know, he didn't give this like um, definition. He just said the humble. So humble yourself. It's very important to be extremely humble, and it's not easy to do for some of you. It's easier for us probably than it is for you guys, um, but stay humble. Yeah, and uh, I want to make a special prayer request for those of you who are really in the power of prayer uh, for our uncle, the guy that I'm named after, actually, my yeah. uncle. We call him Uncle Mike. Everybody that knows him started calling him that because that's all we've ever called him. But uh, Michael, who my mom named me after, he was the first person to really show him, him and our dad in our lives were really the first people to start introducing God to us. And uh, my uncle Mike, he, he became a Christian at the age of around 38, 39, 40, somewhere in there. And I, I knew him before he found God, and I knew him after. And I was a young teenager, 13, 14. And I can remember seeing him change and be transformed and God showing me something. That, that was the first time I remember thinking, there's something to this God thing. I want it. Whatever he's got, I want it. Uh, but he's been going through some uh, health problems. He's um, went through a treatment, some chemo that really hurt him, knocked him down. And uh, he just needs some prayer and be, uh, he needs to be healed. He's getting better. Yeah. He is getting better. He is recovering from that poison essentially. Yeah. And, uh, and we believe God's going to heal him. And we've been praying with him and, and trying to get with him as much as we can, but keep him in your prayers, yeah. Michael, my uncle. Uh, yeah. The good news is he said, he's not going to do the chemo again yeah. that, and that's what we, a lot of people get deceived. I know a lot of you have probably seen loved ones get deceived into taking that stuff and they just feel like there's no other way. And there are other ways. It's, it's, it's just a tough, and it's hard to talk about this stuff on here because it's so crazy. The stuff you'll get banned for talking about medical disinformation and all of that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, it's tough because you see that same pattern and it's hard to believe that certain things are still legal that they use as treatments. Uh, but yeah, he's, He's definitely been a huge impact and a part of our testimony because he started rounding us up and taking us. Yeah, somebody said something about that. Rocket. The rocket. The Artemis rocket. Artemis, yeah. Artemis is actually a demon. Name, they named this rocket. It's one of their, it's the, it's the twin sister, I think, isn't it, of the sun god Apollo that they had their Apollo missions for, named after. And um, I was reading a book and it was, it predates um, NASA, but it was talking about Artemis as being a demon. And I thought, Oh, it's mm -hmm. interesting. That would have been one of the yeah. Nephilim 
We don't have a yeah. screenshot of the picture of Earth they show, do we? No. <laughs> yeah. It looked just like it's the original. It's funny. Yeah. They, yeah. you know, when we caught Buzz Aldrin in the in the footage faking the moon through the window, you know, he had this circular window and and it did look really real. You know, it's on the uh, the final card and some of our other documentaries. You can see that clip of them faking the moon or faking the Earth from space. <laughs> yeah. They really did a good job making this one look very similar to an airplane window view of the sky. Uh, they wanted it to match. It has to match their original deception. So, you know, people are like, man, that doesn't even look real at all. Why didn't they do better? Well, they don't want to go off their original script. This is a sequel to a deception that was from the 70s. You know, so yeah. they, they got to make it look like an airplane window <laughs> shot, just like they did. I can see them pulling out the old files, looking at those pictures like, we're going to have to somehow make this look good for yeah. the present day. And I always wonder, <laughs> why do they only show it from that size? It's like, yeah. where was the halfway shot? Where was, yeah. the, you know, what why about when they were a thousand miles away? Why isn't there really good footage, video, clear footage of it leaving the earth, like time lapse where we can watch it? You know, it's just, oh, here it is. Look, there's the earth. Yeah. Billions of dollars on this one way trip. Really small by now. Yeah. They're gonna, the rocket's not going to make it. It's going to be wasted. Billions of dollars for this Artemis thing. And, and they don't video any of it. They show us animations. And I'm like, I mean, I'm not disappointed because that's what Mrs. my Mrs. Conley was. is up there. Yeah. <laughs> what if that was I hope that's not my coworker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She'll be making fun of me tomorrow. Yeah. That'd be awesome if she was one of us. Just think she will be way better than her. <laughs> where are the stars? Yeah, where are the stars? Of course you can see People stars. were asking that. <laughs> like I, In the comments, on it's been showing up, that Artemis thing on Facebook. It's like, and people are like, where's the stars? And like regular people are starting to be like, why is the light on this thing one way and the earth the other? Yeah. Yeah. The shadows aren't matching up. The shadows yeah. don't match. The sun's hitting the earth from this way, but yet the shadows on the um, spacecraft are going the other way. It's the same type of stuff. And that's the that's a good thing. The Father's given a lot of us um, eyes to see this stuff. And it's, it's such a blessing to not be falling for it again. You know, they're going to do some things. I don't know what they have planned ahead. Um with this mission and this stuff, but I know it's going to be probably a little bit better than the, than it was back before we destroyed the technology. What'd they say? Someone said they did a, they did a spacewalk today and they actually put stars. Oh, that's <laughs> I got to see trying this. to cover up the bubbles in the yeah. foreground. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to see that. Yeah. Sometimes they may try that. They might try it, but they, that's been a bold one. Ever since they faked the air force, faked it and messed up. They're like, let's just cut the stars. Black backgrounds are safe. Yeah, you have all these stargazers being like, that's not the correct constellation. Yeah, we'd all know yeah. that. Yeah, I wish I could pull that up, the live stream. That was so funny. And I'm watching it. And it's like, it's weird. It's not even advertised. No one's talking about this. Like, we're sending a, a, a craft that is capable of holding people to the moon, and, like, no one even knows. Even my space nerd friends are just like, they don't even know. Like, I don't even get recommendations for those videos anymore. It's like they try to hide them. Weird. Well, they, they don't want too much publicity on it right now. Everybody's they know that there's a lot of critical people watching it, so it's much harder for them to yeah to just pull this off undetected. Yeah, they'll they'll clip out the the bad, so they kind of kind of they keep it back, and then if something turns out looking really good, and then they'll promote it. I'm sure. Yeah, the next meetup. Yeah, Carl here. FE Nation, when is the next meetup? I don't know yet. I'm wanting to have one. We need to have one to break up this winter, you know, like have one. I wish we had one next week. We have the whole week off. But yeah. Thanksgiving December, break. Nobody wants December to travel. December is a crazy time. Probably the new year. Probably mm -hmm. January. No, we need a December meetup. That would be cool. Yeah, we'll see. When we plan one, we'll let you guys know when we have another date set. Book of Enoch tells. Oh, I lost it. Where'd it go? Here it is. First book of Enoch tells about the moon, the sun, the star. Sean Griffin just put out his version complete with a contextual study guide. Yeah, he's got a really good version of the book of Enoch. Points out many verses matching up with ours. <laughs> Somebody said once the fish eye lens come off, comes off, there's no going back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. China, uh, they did. A, they did their little. They're they're doing their separate thing. There's a, there's allegedly been some drama, and they're going to break away. And now they're going to have their. ISS, which is or their version of the ISS, the uh, Chinese space station up there. And um, they just had a flat horizon for like their entire spacewalk. It was awesome. Um, so they forgot to add the, the fisheye lens. Not that I think they're up there. I think they just, maybe they're just trying to slowly just kind of go like, okay, we lied. Here it is. It's flat. Um, yeah, that was interesting. Them faking it and 
failing miserably. Even though they did kind of reveal the flat horizon, it's still still kind of funny. All right. Revelation 14.10. Hey, what about that? Yeah. You have anything I'm on that? Pull that one up. I think I have uh, in my teaching. So, uh, Just Revelation past Revelation. 14, I don't have verses memorized, but I'd, I'm sure if I read it as soon as I read it. Isn't that the one about the second? No, oh, that's verse 20. Let me just pull it up real quick. Mm-hmm. The wages of sin is death. King of Waco Mundo. What did he say? Revelation fourteen yeah. ten. Um, I think so. Yeah, fourteen ten. Hmm. Okay, here we go. They do drink the wine of God's fury, which is poured out in full strength into the cup of His wrath. They will be torn, tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. Yeah, it's torment. Yeah. It's definitely going to be torment. And that sounds a lot. Wasn't that Sodom and Gomorrah with the sulfur, with the burning sulfur? It mm -hmm. says they would be an example of what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a verse where it says that they were an example of what's going to happen to the wicked. Um, yeah, they're going to be tormented. They're going to be burned up. It's uh, exactly what It's not going to be us. pleasant. The judgment will be just. People who have harmed his children, that's why it says it's better that a millstone be tied around their neck and then be cast into water. It's not going to be pleasant. It'd be better to drown than what they're going to experience. So when is the body of Christ going to have unity as it once had in New Testament times before the end of the apostles because they were not divided by denominations? Yeah. That's one thing right there, denominations, um, that, that show you where the enemy's working. Uh, like my like my dad said, you know, divide and conquer is the goal of the enemy. When you see a place where there's just people being divided, as soon as a church has something good going, the spirit's moving, they're going to send in a tempter. These they make it their mission. They know these enemies of truth. They know these Satanists, whatever you want to call them. They know the spiritual battle that's going on. So they're going to create. 40, that's why there's forty five. I think forty five thousand denominations. If you break them all down. And it's, it is to divide. And like my, we're driving down the road yesterday and my son said, wow, look, these two churches are literally side by side. You could almost like reach out and touch one and touch the other. But I highly doubt they ever crisscross like one, you know, like they ever have gatherings where they both meet up. They probably have two different denominations. That's why they have two separate buildings. And um, it is tough. And it's tough when you start putting stuff out there and try to fellowship with people. Uh, I, I mean, I personally, I have a hard time finding one person that believes exactly like I do. Even my twin brother here, we've been, we've known each other longer than anybody's known anybody. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to find things that we a hundred percent agree on. Yeah. There are things right now that we still, we're like, we, we not really debate, but we're pulling up different scriptures and saying, this is the way I, you know, God's yeah. revealed it to me. And it, and it, and there's a lot of things where you really have to stick with God and mm -hmm. go with discernment. Yeah. yeah. And look at it like a challenge. Don't look at it like when somebody disagrees with you or believes different, that it's, it's a means to be angry and pull out the swords. Look at it like that's what they're seeing. Why are they seeing it? And it's okay to challenge each other. Okay. Just don't believe everything somebody says, even if they have a wealth of knowledge or they're really, you know, they know the Bible really well, always prove it for yourself through the Holy spirit. Joy's here. Hey, Joy, good to see you. We've missed you. I feel like I haven't heard from you in a long time. It's been a while. All right. Any more questions? I don't want to keep my brother here too long. I know he's got to go to go home. It's a work night. We work tomorrow. Um, we will come barely. on and we do. Barely yeah, we barely work. We dress up. To, we came to work like almost dressed identical today. It was yeah. embarrassing. It is embarrassing. His shirt was the same color, but it had a collar. Thank, Thank God. Goodness. It was different. Yeah. Uh, it always looks like our mom still dresses us sometimes. <laughs> But um, yeah, we'll have Ken on. Um, I think it'll be probably another month and a half or so when we get to have him on. I really don't know. I don't want to speak for him, but hopefully we can have him on soon. Yeah. And um, get deeper. I'd like to have maybe have Sean come on too, another Bible scholar. That way we can just sit back and let them uh, break this stuff down. Um, there, Sean. I'd, like, I'd love to have him on. Uh, maybe a roundtable discussion on this. I, I believe it needs. Um, more depth and a, and a better follow-up with just people putting out the best verses and clearing up the confusion because you see so many people and I want to see if I can find the uh, stereotypical things here. Let me find it. Oops. Uh, my slides. It's near the front. Um, there it is. 
right there. When you, you see a lot of people on the streets doing this and, it, and people don't run to this kind of a creator where they see that love him or burn forever. Yeah. God loves you. But if you died right now, he'd burn you every day forever. Yeah. Forever and ever. But he and does ever. love you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really hard to get to know him. And, and, and you see the same false teachings when you have a loved one die, someone loses love a me, family member. Yeah, It's kind of a love like, me or else mentality. Uh, it's like your loved one died, but the, God just needed an angel. So he took them away from you. And it, the Bible tells us death is the enemy, you know. So there's a lot of things um, we get we get wrong, and it's because people are just they're not necessarily trying to be false teachers. They're just passing on what they were taught when they were children. Not everyone that believes certain things are evil. They just sometimes it's in innocent, and the people that deceived them, those are the ones that really deserve that punishment because it's a chain effect uh, when you do these things, when you partake in those things. All right. I think hell is a metaphor. What'd they say? Did you know oh, just said a long time. Welcome, man. Yeah. Man, woman, I long, eyes open. Could be anybody. <laughs> yeah. Long time subscriber, one time live. First time catching this live. Yeah. Make sure you click the bell and go in and always make sure you're subscribed. For some reason, a lot of people end up getting unsubscribed. And uh, surely it's not anything intentional or malicious. It's not like we're shadow banned. We've actually been blessed in spite of the shadow ban to um, surpass. We just, yeah, we just made 100,000 subscribers. That's insane. For... Yeah. And uh, I'm also, I, I, the, the plaque, people are like, you should apply for the plaque. And I'm like, you know, I want to see if, if we meet the criteria because they said they have criteria. No, we don't meet the criteria because some, a lot of our contact, content has been flagged as not suitable for advertisers. <laughs> imagine that and it's like videos we're talking about biblical stuff and it and it'll get flagged not suitable for advertisers so they will they will ban they'll ban that stuff so um yeah definitely not going to um be in that that uh that group of people that gets the plaque but uh still still a blessing i don't care about plaques and all that stuff or hall of fame or anything that stuff is all nonsense but um uh, i want to thank real quick shout out to our patrons um for everything you do and uh, joining in our patron hangouts, we have a couple of people that like to join in on those. And it's it's been a blessing every other Saturday. We sit and hang out and talk and fellowship, study the Bible. This past one was, was a lot of fun. So we thank you guys for that. It helps us do things we couldn't normally do, like heat and cool the office. Hopefully we can get air conditioning up there or a heater so that we can go up there and not worry about people trampling overhead. But uh, let's see. Yeah. He says, Sean says, uh, you want to come on and do a roundtable discussion, substitutionary atonement. Heck, it, when he uses big words like that. Substitutionary. Now, <laughs> like, um, Sean uses big I'm words. I'm a math teacher, and I think I know that kind he of He probably knows. Yeah. He's a math teacher. But yeah, I'd like to look, I would love to join you in a roundtable discussion. I always learn stuff because it forces me to look into the, the deeper content with Sean. If you haven't subscribed to him, Kingdom in Context, again, you go to our channel the homepage and scroll down. We have all of our videos or all of our recommended channels. He's one of them. One of the top ones. Uh, I've got to meet him in person. I know a lot of you are probably jealous, but I got to meet him in person like <laughs> two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whenever flat Toberfest was. Yeah. It was awesome. Got and to I wish I could have gone to that. Yeah. That would have been he, fun. He missed out. But yeah, uh, really awesome Bible scholar, but humble guy. Uh, he knows a lot, but he's still humble. And that is, that's hard to do. If I knew as much as he did, I would not be humble. Um, unless the father was really guiding me. So you can see the father's guiding him. He's come out of a lot of different beliefs, was raised in the church, and somehow even going through Bible school came to some conclusions that I hardly ever see people come to that have been to that through that route. So i um, really blessed to have him as a brother. So you guys check that out. I'd love to join you, Sean. Anytime, send me, send me a link. Even if it's kind of last minute, I can join in. Would be awesome. But yeah, thank you guys. Oh, we got a super chat. Look at that. Knowing about the creation and the hell misinformation, can't tell you how releasing it is when I get to connect with you all through your videos. Yeah, yeah, definitely a blessing to get to reach people who are, are having questions or having doubts, wanting a relationship with the Father, but see Him for someone that He isn't. That's one of the main reasons I started putting out videos is because He was blowing me away with His mercy and His love and that grace where He picked me up, not just once, but it was like the prodigal son story more than once. He picked me up. He healed me. He did these things that I did not deserve. It was not by me doing everything perfect, but 
humbling myself and, and turning to him when we needed. And it's sad because it's that father son relationship where sometimes you only call your parent when you need them. And that was me. And so many times, and sometimes it still is. I think a lot of us get caught up in that where it's like, here, we're desperate. We need you now. Um, where are you? And he, he picked me up and he's healed me. I've, I mean, just the miracles and the power and the love and the Holy Spirit and his outpouring of how he can just heal me instantly. It, it made me realize he's not who I've been told. And that's where I started hearing things from my brother talking about this stuff. And I'm like, that makes a lot of sense with what I've seen in his grace and his mercy and how he's just. To me, this sounds like justice. It sounds just. It doesn't sound like something that would have you when you go and, and you're going to move on to the next chapter and you make it to the first resurrection, or you escape the second death, you're not sitting there in eternity 2,000 years from now going, man, my poor grandmother's down there burning right now. You know, like it would be hard for anyone to to accept that. And so uh, the truth really does set you free. It brings you closer to the Father, and that's our goal. Uh, our goal here is to get you to have that relationship, because once you start walking with Him, it's going to change the lives of people around you, not just you, but others. And so it's good to to have that experience and that just that peace that you have that comes along with it. Yeah. And if you, and you know, a, a lot of, a lot of you guys are probably going through some stuff like, you know, kind of tough situations. I know I was the past couple of years, I went through a divorce. I went through, um, you know, we lost our mother and we had so many things that were kind of going against us. It's really easy to lose track of where our joy and our peace and those things come from. And it can knock you down. Uh, you know, splitting time with my daughter, who's nine right now, which that was just torture for me. And, it, you know, it is and it still is. And it's one of those things where you um, it's easy to get to let that distract you from God. But pull yourself back to God, put focus all your ways on him. And that I can I can tell you, no, you, you might feel like you've hit a, a low spot. There's no coming out of it. But God can bring you right back to where, you, you know, your peace, your joy, your walk is back. And really the the pit of despair that we feel at certain times, it's just because we got further away from God. Uh, and nothing's ever going to fill that void. And you'll learn that real quick. Get back to God. Don't don't turn to uh, the drinking to try to help you out, feel a little better here and there. It, it's never going to, it's not a permanent solution. It's just a temporary Band-Aid. And you want something that's going to bless your life in every single way. Yeah. The fountain of living waters that we hear about in the Bible, and the Father refers to himself as that. And um, it's, it's powerful. He says these people, they've hewn themselves out broken cisterns, you know, where water is literally falling out of them. That's how it is. When we walk away from them, that water just flows away. And we, we yeah. have to go back to that source of living water. Somebody said, check out the Edward Fudge and research uh, conditional immortality. Uh, I haven't looked into that, but Edward Fudge, there was a book. It's called The Fire That Consumes. I bought it and it is, I started reading. I haven't finished it. I have a hard time finishing a book. But it was really, really good. Uh, he goes in and breaks this topic down. The um, the fire that consumes is basically kind of the stuff we've talked about, about this eternal punishment uh, and the flame, the fire that's going to burn the wicked and how it's been misrepresented. It's an older book. I'm not sure exactly when it was written, but it's very, very good in-depth in uh, teaching right. on this. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, this has been a blessing. I know we're kind of all over the place. That's why I highly recommend if you're confused, <laughs> go back and watch Ken's video. Go back and watch uh, his video. Yeah, we'll I'll, link, I'll make sure I'll link his link health video original. in the uh, description. But Ken's video is like 45 minutes long or so, but it breaks down these three words or these, you know, these are the words that are co commonly translated as hell. And um, there was another part of his video I was going to show, but I, I just want to encourage you guys to watch it and subscribe to him if you have not extremely smart and humble guy and uh, does a lot of things that you know are just impressive because he hasn't been making videos for that long and you would think he was he's been making videos for decades and he's only been doing it for several years now yeah so um awesome to have people like that and he's all the way way up in canada i'd like to go see that go up there someday make a make a reason have a reason for a trip yeah somebody said your average Joe, love this channel. I have been awake for several years now. Keep up the good work. Good night. Yeah, have a good night. Good night. Yeah, well, we love you guys. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. You. Thanks for joining us and uh, studying this stuff for yourselves. And uh, if you have questions along the way, ask him. He's studied this way more than I have. <laughs> ask my brother. I may leave your one. You need a. You got an email I can leave in the description, right? 
Uh, yeah, I got you. One. Yeah, yeah, Grace one. and Truth Channel. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll paste his email in there if he reminds me. I'll try to do that tonight. And uh, yeah, he said Ken's a legend. He's been studying alongside Sean, so we know he's well trained. They kind of synced up. The father connected these two back in the day, and they they both kind of were like, "We know so much. Let's just start making videos <laughs> and um, and putting things in context." And so uh, that is that's really cool. Tons you can binge watch. Oh, thanks from the Philippines. Stuff. The Philippines. Wow. Yeah, my daughter's got some Filipino. Yeah. You know, yeah. She's she was asking me that. What am I? Yeah, our dad just went to the <laughs> Philippines yeah. a few years ago. His wife's family is from there, or his, I guess his his wife's dad's wife. Touchstone. Yeah, that's wife. that word. Somebody just brought that up. We were talking about uh torment. I right, click on it. Oh, I don't know You're what I just did. Breaking my computer. I don't know brother. what I just did. Stop Touchstone. Yeah, that computer. word in the parable of uh, dives in the Lazarus and the rich man. When he said, I'm in torment by this flame, there was a uh, a judgment stone. Yeah. That Thank was you. neat. Yeah. Glad you got to jump in. Eyes open. Love you guys. Yeah. You good? You got to go. You got to go. Yeah. You got to go. No, I'm kidding. I don't Famous have to go. Time. I have nowhere to go. It's okay. Y'all okay. yeah. have a blessed night. Yeah. Love you guys. The Father loves you. We'll be around very soon. Stay safe. Stay humble. Stay ready. Keep looking up.